Hello everyone, my name is Akil and I work with Iman Research, a community think tank that studies violent extremism and other issues facing vulnerable populations here in Malaysia. As part of this chat series, I thought I'd talk a bit about xenophobia and the recent upsurge in hate speech that we've observed, especially on social media. There's the popular saying that a person's true character is often revealed in times of crisis. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic has been a sort of litmus test of such character and our ability to demonstrate resilience in the face of adversity. To be fair, there have been many uplifting stories of kindness and compassion during this period. In the two months since a movement control order was imposed um, in Malaysia, we've read st daily stories of heroic frontliners and ordinary Malaysians going out of their way to support those in need. However, this pandemic has also exposed some of humanity's darkest traits. We have noticed a significant increase in hateful extremist rhetoric, particularly on social media. Just as the virus has been able to invoke a resilient um, spirit amongst some of us, it has as easily triggered fear and distrust in the collective consciousness of others, giving rise to a sort of perverted solidarity among Malaysians against so-called outsiders. If I can sort of surmise how the rise of hateful extremism has occurred during this pandemic here in Malaysia, I think that it, it sort of occurred in three waves. The first wave was targeted to two groups in particular. It started off with a kind of general stereotyping of Chinese nationals, given initial reports of the coronavirus having originated from a wet market in Wuhan, and claims of poor hygiene levels that caused the virus transmission from wild animals to humans. But I think the group that bore the brunt of ridicule and hate from the public, and were essentially blamed for bringing the virus to our shores, were participants of the public gathering um, that happened in late February. Now, this was a gathering of about 6,000 Muslim preachers from at least a dozen countries and it became to date the largest COVID-19 cluster in the country, contributing to half of our total cases with ripple effects being felt across the region. What was more complex about this turn of events is that it also triggered religious sensitivities. Now, public gatherings are a prominent practice among Muslims who see it as a way to get closer to God and this then outweighs any worldly consequences for them, you know, let alone uh, a global pandemic of this proportion. Moving on to the second wave, um, this was more of a public rebuke of Malaysians who were, you know, caught violating lockdown or MCO conditions. Um, there were videos of people either out jogging in public or being stopped at roadblocks without valid reason to travel. Um, and hence, they were at the receiving end of a lot of hate from netizens. What we noticed, however, in this case is that the level of hate was not as pointed. Um, though some comments were hurtful or racist in nature, they were ultimately targeted at individuals rather than specific communities or ethnic groups. So perhaps this was uh, more of a circumstantial pattern with no indication of it being a systemic problem per se. But the third wave, um, which we are perhaps most concerned about as it occurred with a particular ferocity and quickly gained traction among the general population, is the sudden surge in xenophobia against Rohingya refugees and migrant communities in Malaysia. It started after Malaysia turned away a boat carrying 200 Rohingya refugees in mid-April over coronavirus fears. There were also fake claims on social media that the Rohingyas were demanding Malaysian citizenship. The problem with this is that people online quickly lapped up these narratives and it sparked a flurry of hateful messages and hashtags labelling you know, these refugees ungrateful, calling for their arrest and deportation. There were even threats of physical violence against the community. And it was a very shocking shift in sentiment as Malaysia has traditionally been very empathetic to the plight of refugees, especially the Rohingya. What worsened the situation um, is that about two weeks later, hundreds of migrant workers and refugees were detained in immigration raids on several COVID-19 raid zones. Um, these were mostly in Kuala Lumpur. You know, um, they were then placed in detention camps, which is, you know, ironic as that's a fresh cluster waiting to happen. You know, perhaps more crucially, the raids have also destroyed the trust that was there between the authorities, humanitarian groups, and the affected community especially when assurances were previously given um, that undocumented migrants, refugees who come forward to get tested for the virus would not be arrested. 
Instead, what we are faced with now is a risk of further community transmissions as remaining migrants and refugees living in COVID-19 hotspots have gone into hiding for fear of arrest and then potentially carrying the virus with them wherever they go. So yes, I mean that's that's a bit of an update from you know on how things stand in Malaysia. It's a bleak scenario, you might say, and I think that what sort of accentuates the volatility of this situation is the idea that extremism ultimately begets extremism. Just as there might be some extremists among Malaysians who are driven to committing violence against marginalized peoples, similarly sustained persecution and discrimination over time could also unwittingly lead refugees and migrant communities right into the arms of violent extremist groups as well. I guess at the end of the day, there's also a strong belief that we can reverse the current situation if enough voices of compassion appear through the cracks. At Iman, for instance, we're part of several informal networks and local civil society groups that are trying to understand um, these vulnerable populations better and to extend support to them in, in, you know, in these difficult times and even beyond that. Moving forward, I hope that we can come together to collectively address these complex issues in, in what is undoubtedly a highly unprecedented time in our history. So I'll leave it at that. Um, thank you very much for your time and assalamu alaikum.